wellness coach and fitness expert, Deborah Atkinson, has helped 150,000 women flip their second half of life with the vitality and energy they want. She's the best-selling author of You Still Got It, Girl, the After 50 Fitness Formula for Women, Navigating Fitness After 50, your GPS for choosing programs and professionals you can trust, and hot not bothered which sounds very interesting <laughs> deborah hosts flipping 50 tv which is a really popular youtube channel right yes and a flipping 50 podcast she has 35 years fitness experience is an international fitness presenter for associations including international council of active aging idea and sca athletic business can Oh, yeah, <laughs> like I don't know what these things are. She's she's very smart about exercise. Um, she's the founder of Flipping50.com and the Flipping50 Specialist Program. She's a frequent contributor at HuffPost, ShareCare, and other featured outlets. Um, yeah, and I don't know your exact age, Deborah, but I'm guessing it's at least 50 if you're teaching. <laughs> Closer to 56 than to 55 at okay. this point. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if you see, I mean, this is just a little headshot, but Deborah's in great shape. You know, she's like, def, you know, looks a lot younger than her age. So she's definitely like living proof of, you know, what she preaches. And I really, I wanted, I want to talk about mold a little bit because the truth is like we all have real life hurdles to our health and fitness, which you've recently experienced. Deborah has moved to Phoenix like I did because of mold she experienced in her home in Colorado. And you were telling me recently how that's kind of messing with your fitness and your weight, totally. which is probably like a new experience for you. <laughs> you want to share a bit about that? Oh, yeah. I could share about the negative experience I had at a doctor's office a little bit ago, but I won't. Oh. Uh, <laughs> no, true. So I was in the environment for about six months and before I really knew it. So, um, got out, feel much better. And yet realize that my endurance has just been really lousy all year. And, you know, it should have improved given that I came from altitude in the mountains and I'm here now in Scottsdale, Arizona, where you know, I should have improved, not gotten worse and really, I'm struggling so I can swim and bike. Okay. But running of course, which is much harder as far as on you physically for your oxygen capacity. Anyway, I, I just have no endurance and I've been a runner for 37 years and, and that's always my favorite thing. And it's not mm. my favorite. I really dislike it right now because you know, we don't like things we're not good at. <laughs> so, um, that's kind of where I'm at. And that was coming together. And then I, did an Ironman um, three weeks ago. And I know somebody may be listening thinking, well, your running can't be that bad, right? Because on the end of an Ironman, you do do a marathon, but I did a lot of walking in that marathon. Oh, so you um, didn't run at all. Yeah, yeah, ran a little, but it wasn't comfortable. And I knew it wasn't going to be. So going into it, I my mindset was okay. But um, it, it's since training, you know, all that training, lots of training, I gained nine pounds this year and, you know, I'm only five, four and none of that fits. You know, I haven't, haven't been on the couch eating bonbons and brownies and I haven't changed my diet significantly. So had a little bit more stress this year and maybe, maybe tipped into menopause a little bit more, you know, so mm -hmm. estrogen is lower and that made it easier to store fat potentially, but nine pounds is a lot on a very active person who's consciously, you know, watching what she's doing. So, you know, the suspicion is that, you know, I'm just good at making fat and it stored the toxins, you know, where I still probably have mold in me that I need to detox and get out. So, you know, it wreaks havoc with all the things I love. And so I'm working right now on getting back to feeling a whole lot better. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know it's not always easy to like air our dirty laundry as practitioners, know, right? but my tribe is pretty in the mold and I, I wanted you to share your story. And yeah. uh, I gained a little weight when I was at my mold peak for sure. Um, did you? Yeah, I did. Cause I couldn't exercise like at all. I was 
exhausted. All I did was walk my dogs. I would literally go to the gym, Deborah, and I'd be like, okay, I'll work out before I get in the sauna. And then I just like lie on a bench and then get in the sauna. <laughs> That's all <laughs> I could do. So, and I, I really wanted carbs, which now I understand more of about why that was. But like, I was so exhausted. And what do we look for for fuel, like caffeine and sugar? So I was eating more carbs. I was moving less and I gained weight. But some people gain massive amounts of weight very quickly from what mold does to your metabolism and inflammation and storing toxins like you said so everybody's yeah. a little different so like for you you might have noticed that though like you know like I'm doing everything right why am I gaining weight I think yep. that's been the story with environmental illness like I'm doing so many things right why am I x so my x's were different than your x's but um mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm yeah, we're trying to help Deborah kind of sort through uh -huh. her mold her mold situation. But somehow she still managed to do an Iron Man in the midst of all of it. So I think you've made a lot of good choices at the same time. Oh, I will have to tell you though, you'd be proud of me. So I realize now that my my sensitivity to it is so much more heightened that yeah. they showed me my hotel room. So you're at Cozumel, you're at the beach, it's super hot and humid. They opened the door and I was like, I can't stay here. It was like, if I'm sleeping in this room for eight hours, it's like, I can smell the mold. And so they showed me a different room and it was almost as bad. So oh no. that wasn't ideal. I know, but I realized, wow, I don't know that I ever would have noticed that before. Yeah. You become sensitized yeah. to it. And I've had to say no to a hotel room too, which is like, kind of embarrassing but it's like it is what it is you can't be sick just to save your right. pride or whatever so right. I think I should start remembering when I check in say hey I'm gonna have to like check out the room first so that way they get a heads up <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's pretty common in hotels unfortunately so it's a bummer uh, so we talked a little bit about your background in exercise I wonder if you share especially the challenges we go through uh, and there's some men on this call. Are they yeah. still here? Yeah. Hi, Paul. <laughs> You're still still here. Like as we age, um, how we exercise changes or, or what is best for us changes, what we're attracted to changes. Um, tell us like why you chose to specialize in this topic of kind of after 50 exercise and some of your like main points you stress. Well, I think I started focusing on it before I knew I was, I was, I was raised by older parents. So I had older siblings. I was in this environment where I was getting schooled before I knew it. And I was always given older clients, even as a, you know, 20 year old student undergrad, oh, I started yeah. okay. working with people. So I've heard baby boomers, um, complaints and wishes all along the way. But then when baby boomers were really kind of turning into women and men who were in perimenopause, menopause, you know, or turning 50 and what they were saying is nobody gets okay. me, you know, my doctor, you know, doesn't understand me. My, my doctor said, you know, well, welcome to menopause. You know, what do you expect? You're getting older, you know, and, and it's as if nobody was really hearing them and they were, they were being told this is it. It's all downhill. So I realized that, you know, there's a niche here that nobody's serving and women don't feel heard. So that's when I really started looking at it, but I didn't really dive into the research about hormone balancing exercise specifically for women in midlife until I was there. Mm. And, you know, I went online. So I started spending eight and 10 and 12 hours behind my keyboard and I had left safety and security to do an online business. And I was, I jump with both feet, right? I didn't leave a safety net. So it had to work. And I looked up, you know, and I'm close to a year later and I'd only really exercised 20 minutes a day. I mean, literally I was, I was panicked, um, you know, so a lot of stress that year over what did I do? Oh my God, you know, this has to work. And I, you know, I would look better. I was mm. a better body composition. I had more energy and I was 49 when I did all that. And so even if you're not having really bad symptoms, you know, your hormones are changing under the hood. So at any other time in my life, if I would have, 
you know, not been sleeping or started to gain a little bit of weight, like most respectable women, I would have exercised more and harder, right? That would have been my answer. And like cut calories or cut fat. Yeah. And I, so I said, okay, I really have to dig into what just happened. What happened for me? So as I did that, I started to realize there's so little research out there featuring women as subjects in exercise science. So then when you look at a fraction of that, it's probably dedicated to women in midlife because researchers don't like us. We go up and down, you know, we're too variable. There's too much that they can't control. So they don't want to look at us, you know, all the reasons why we do need the research, we can't have it, you know? So I started looking at what little was out there and it's so very different than what's typical, which is featuring a male, you know, a 25 year old male who's at the peak of his muscle mass. What in the world makes us think that's going to work for a woman who's 55, you know, at the peak of essentially fat storage, right? I mean, that just doesn't add up. So the good news is when you tweak the type of the exercise you're doing and the timing, the time of day that you're doing it, it all changes. You change everything. Mm. And so you can do so, so much less exercise than you probably ever thought you could and actually feel so much better and get better Mm. results. Mm. So do you think that's true for younger people too? If, if you think about it, or is it more for our age people that that's that? You know, consistently it's more true for middle-aged people But, you know, on a monthly basis, those younger women, for sure, who go through monthly cycles that are a little bit more rocky, you know, they definitely notice where they are in their month and and things are changing for them. They're too probably going through some of those periods of time when, you know, two weeks out of the month, they maybe want to exercise intensely and hard. And two weeks, they actually want to cut back and do less. And they're going to feel much better and get better results when they're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Fe- female athletes, and maybe you can speak a little bit to, to male athletes yes. as people working out. Um, yeah. It, it, you know, there's more, I think, awareness now about the monthly cycle and how our energy changes mm-hmm. yeah. and inflammation changes, which I think is, is great. So that we're growing that awareness. Yeah. And I agree with you just from my own anecdotal experience. Um, when I was younger, I was really into running and this and that. And like, probably also a little bit cause of time or just like, also cause I feel like my joints aren't interested in like impact so much anymore. I started changing what I'm doing and people are often like, Oh, you're so fit. Like, what are you doing? I'm like, not that much really. Like <laughs> not that much. You know, you don't have to do that much. Oh, I do remember. I think you drugged me to to yoga and I was like, when do we start? Like I took for Deborah the Kundalini yoga, which is basically not a workout. It's just breathing and stuff. Um, I don't only do Kundalini yoga. I was like, (laughs) I do a 50 minute Pilates class twice a week and I like walk my dog. So that's like the core of what I do. And I'm pretty, pretty, you know, busy, but like it's moving around. Yeah, I don't think you have to do yeah. um, nearly as much and it can do harm. And when you tell your mold story, I think, like you yeah. said, it's kind of a combination also of the st- emotional stress in your life and training for this event when maybe your body doesn't have the resources yeah. yet for that. Yeah, exactly. And you just yeah. overload it, right? So it's like we always have to factor in, you know, life sometimes is a workout. So if you create this optimal workout plan and then life throws you curveballs and you've got major stressors, you actually have to look at that as this is like a workout. So I need to True. give myself a complimentary recovery movement makes more sense than doing a hard workout. Yeah. 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 So you mentioned ideal times. Can you talk more about that? Yeah. So in two ways we could talk about that. So I like to use a mantra intense, early and light, late referring to time of day. The question used to be, you know, what's the best time of day to exercise? And the answer used to be the the time that you will. Right. But if you're going to do intense exercise, like interval training, or you're really going to get after weight training, 
you know, want to do those things earlier in the day. If you're working with your cortisol, it, oh, helps, okay. it helps you because you're revving your body up essentially. And later in the day, you actually want to do more calming, more relaxing kinds of exercise. So yoga and Pilates, you could probably get away with weight training later in the day, but I wouldn't do interval training later in the day, especially mm. if you have trouble with sleeping. You want things that are going to start to help you calm down, relax, lose tension. So as far as time, you know, I think that's something that we really need to get over. I mean, we've all been given this quota, you know, where we used to always tell people you should exercise, you know, cardiovascularly 20 to 60 minutes, you know, several times a week. And, you know, the truth now is that we've kind of gotten to a point where we think, okay, well, if I don't have 20 minutes or if I don't have an hour, it's not worth it, but not true at all. We actually, it all counts. We need to be thinking that you're actually taking your system and you're revving it up and whatever amount of time you're doing that can be good. So it all counts toward revving up your metabolism, getting your energy flowing, getting your circulatory system moving, and just moving your body the way it was designed to for life. So it doesn't necessarily have to meet a quota. So 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, if you've got it. And honestly, beyond that, you know, I would rethink just a little bit. So I'll challenge you if you're used to doing 45 minutes or an hour or more of exercise, you know, I'm really ask yourself, do I feel better when I'm done? You know, right. or do I feel like I need a nap? Cause then for sure, you're probably taking your adrenals in the wrong direction. Yeah. Right? You yeah. should feel certainly like two hours when you're done, you should feel like you bounced back and like, I am so glad I exercised today because I have so much energy. You shouldn't want to couch compensate. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I can all share a few stories of that. It's like, I've tried CrossFit a few times. It's like super fun. Right. Oh my God. Forget it. Like I'm so, I can't sleep that night. I'm all screwed up. Um, and I get super sore cause I'm like overdoing it with all the excitement <laughs> around me. Um, and even Pilates, like it used to be even like this time last year, if I did three classes in a week, it was too much for me. And now I can so it does change. Yeah. You know, it does change yeah. over time um, with various factors with our health. For sure. um, but yeah. yeah, I love your lesson. Like, you know, less can actually be more. I just found this old podcast I did a long time ago with a woman. It's kind of the same thing. Like she was kind of exercise obsessed, diet obsessed, but couldn't lose these 15 pounds. And then she broke her leg and she was just like on the couch eating chips and just what resting and she lost the weight. <laughs> <laughs> so is that Body what we should rest. all do but like yeah, yeah she was really stressed yeah. about losing the weight and that that uh change of hormones keeping yourself in high stress about um you know losing weight can be detrimental as well yeah well and i like to i like to catch clients when they're talking like that and make sure that they realize you know, when you're so focused on that thing you want to get rid of you may actually be attracting it to you, right? That's so true. You want to yeah. vision where you want to go, how you want to feel, what that's going to look like, as opposed to got to get this weight off, got to get this weight off, because your brain doesn't hear anything but wait, wait, wait. <laughs> you know, and yeah, yeah, more of it. Yeah, yeah. Any other key tips for people? Maybe you want to conclude men here, and then we can talk about Definitely. the program. Okay. You know, I think especially for midlife you know, people who are entering their forties, starting to get hormone fluctuations more consistently, right? Not just on a monthly basis. If you're a younger woman, strength training is your best friend and, and it will be for all of us because we're wow. all going to age, right? So we start to lose muscle mass after the age of 25, as long as we're not resistance training. So those of you who've been resistance training, doing strength training or weight training, however you want to refer to that, you're, you're so much further ahead, but it's also never too late. So strength training is super powerful. And when you were talking about, you know, time, like I only have 10 minutes or 20 minutes, or maybe that's all my energy will allow me. You can do a great weight training workout in 10 minutes. Really. It's, it's all about stimulating major muscle groups and 
you want to what I call hit it and quit it. It's, it's not about being in the gym for an hour. And most people we know in the gym for an hour are like spending more time doing this between sets, you know, than they are doing the lifting. They're yeah, just looking at their phones, right? You're in a hurry. Yeah. Right. And, and yet between exercises, you want to go slow and reach fatigue during the exercise, but 10 minutes. So we're talking three really well-targeted exercises, three times, and then you're done. So in, in compound exercises, like a squat or a, a row or a press, you use more than one muscle group. You use several. And that's the key is do, do it like you're moving in life. And then you can do less, but get better results. And then if you have more time, you expand that. You can literally do your smaller muscle groups like your arms, you know, your calves, your shoulders, and um, you can get a great workout in 20 or 30 minutes. And the great piece about that is testosterone and growth hormone. Mm. So men are super lucky. So if testosterone levels fall off for men later, and all they've got to do is really get back in the weight room and lift weights a couple times a week, and you're practically good to go. Wow, so, that's cool. Yeah, for women, it helps. We have to do a little bit more. We have to work a little bit harder at it because we had less to begin with. But we all need that if we're going to maintain muscle mass as we age. We need that testosterone, and then we need a good night's sleep. Growth hormone is key too. So that gives you the benefits from all the exercise that you're doing, but that feeds into itself. So you exercise well and, and on target, you're going to sleep better. Mm, okay. Yeah. That's a great point. I just talked to a client today who's really struggling with sleep. Mm. I didn't ask her about exercise actually. <laughs> Pull her back. Oh, I know. That's a, that's a good point. Okay. Okay. 10 minutes, 10 minutes of exercise a day with no um, restriction. So self-directed your intensity, do whatever you want, but 10 minutes of exercise a day, self reports of sleep quality goes up by 33%. Okay. That's a great tip. Yeah. So maybe I can share my screen. Can you talk? I was just looking at your 12 week program before we got on and it's like a great deal for a lot. It seems like for 12 weeks of midwinter exercise. (laughs) That new year, that new year intention. Yes. It's yeah. It's awesome. Here's been the awesome feedback that we've gotten. You know, people will say I started for weight loss, you know, or for muscle tone, but I got my life back, you know, and that's really what the program is all about is about giving the inner strength back from it. You know, it's not about getting better at doing the gym and this is all exercise that you can do at home. So home gym, right. Included, but it's about getting better at life. You know, it's about being able to benchmark walking up and down stairs. If that used to bother your knees, that it no longer does, or that, you know, you couldn't pick up the grandchildren without it bothering your back. And now you can, or, you know, a multitude of things that, maybe you're not doing now that you wish you were doing or could do again. Mm. That's, that's really ultimately the benefit. But a good friend of ours, uh, both of ours said to me once muscle is the organ of longevity, you know, so no matter what what else you love to do in your life, you know, you've got to have muscle and we've got to work hard to hold on to it as we age. Yeah, I think that's really true. I mean, I think back to when I was like, um, how old was I then? Like late 20s going to Chinese medicine school. And I definitely weighed more because I was strong. (laughs) I had a lot of muscle mass. Um, So I, I, and I noticed sometimes, you know, I'm in my mid 40s and I was like, I notice I like it's slipping and I get, I pay attention. I'm like, oh, let me get back to like, doing more squats, doing things that are more challenging, like taking care of my hormones, getting more rest, 
taking some supplements for hormones because I do not want to see that muscle mass go away. Which is a great point. So for everybody who's watching, you know, if you ever are buying another bathroom scale, never buy one that only does weight. Make sure it tells you your body composition because you want to know, is that weight that I'm losing or gaining muscle or is it fat? Because there's a big difference in, in your health in the two of those. Yeah. Yeah. So this is 12 weeks. Tell me more about like the components. It's $97, you guys. Like that's a really great, you know, deal if you're wanting to get back into exercise, get some more professional advice. So here we go. We got yoga videos, core videos. What else? So you've got 12 weeks and you get one brand new strength training video every single week. So you'll do that twice. And okay. The idea is then it gets familiar, but not too much so, right? And then you're going to move on and progress to the next one. They're all like 30 to 40 minutes. I think the longest one is 42 minutes. And there's probably even one that's much shorter than that. So we give you a lot of variety so that every week we're surprising your muscles a little bit. Now you only have so many joint movements, right? We can only do so much with your joints. So some of the exercises are similar, but they're in a different sequence in order, sequencing the amount of time that you're holding the um, movement, all of that changes the results that you get. So it keeps you mentally stimulated as well as, you know, physically challenging you a little bit each week. So we take you to fatigue, ideally which means you're choosing weights and you're choosing to ideally I have three at home, like three sets, a, a lightweight, a medium weight and a heavier weight. So that for large muscle groups I'm taking care of. And for small muscle groups, I got some weights I can use for shoulders or for arms. And that's really all you need that and a ball, which most people have. Okay. <laughs> Just a sitting in a ball. corner somewhere, right? Okay. Like one of those big exercises. Oh yes. Okay. <laughs> I bought one of those when I started to make my home gym. <laughs> <laughs> my son bounces on it at least. Um, cool. That's awesome. And are the calls or ways that you check in or what, we have an amazing Facebook group. So it's a private group where you've got access to me. So I'll jump in there and do lives if there are a lot of questions on a certain topic. And otherwise, everybody's tagging me constantly. So we're <laughs> answering questions daily. But the real benefit of that group is the women who end up in that group somehow, there it's always the right people. And they are right. so supportive. It's a collaborative group and they end up, you know, asking each other, they end up reaching out. So in 12 weeks, imagine it, something goes wrong, right? Somebody gets sick, um, you know, a tragedy happens in the family and you're in there with women who are right here in the same scope of life you're in who get it and they're uplifting you. It's, it's been a really cool experience. Yeah, that's great. That's really great. And, you know, I think we all struggle in different areas with our health. So if you're a person who, yeah, like life is intense and you're caring for aging parents or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it is, your work is demanding, you just have people like, hey, we get it. Like we're here and we're supporting each other and we're exercising the smart way, which isn't time consuming. And you know, it's efficient and stuff like that. So there's that program is available now and it's 12 week program. And if you're not ready for all that, there's a five day, I was calling it like a sampler of what <laughs> yeah. you do. What is that one about? <laughs> that's the five day flip. So that's five days, five really short videos. So 10 to 15 minutes long, but it's like, I've laid out a week for you. So there's two cardio workouts. There's two strength training workouts. And then we do a little yoga and core in between. So you get a recovery day. So I'm also saying, okay, if you were going to lay out your week, ideally here's how it would go. And I do it in my living room with you. So you don't need any equipment. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So that's free. That's the second link yeah. I put in the chat. Or if you're on Facebook, it's the second link. Or if you're on YouTube, it'll be the second link to flipping50.com. <laughs> it says five day after that. So 
Yeah, great. Well, thank you so much, Deborah. Any last thoughts or any last questions on the live that anyone would like to ask? No, other than, you know, yeah, anybody ask a question, please. But my last tip would be you do have time, but it all counts too. So don't make yourself feel guilty. You know, just go out and go for a walk. Go, you know, if you're spending all day in the kitchen, hopefully not making cookies, but doing something else. <laughs> You know, that counts too. You're on your feet. It's activity, you know, just complement it with a good stretch or some core exercise. So your back doesn't hurt at the end That's of the day. That's a good point. Yeah. Just kind of work it out. Yeah. I think you get kind of, I think there's an unhealthy addiction to exercise to some extent because it releases these good hormones, happy hormones. And you're like, oh, I can't, I miss my workout. I'm going crazy. So I've been there too. But I also now I'm more just mildly like, I like to move. So like yesterday I was in front of my computer a lot and my son had already walked the dogs. And I was like, I'm, when I finally was done, I'm like, I'm going to walk the dogs again <laughs> because <laughs> they don't mind. And I just like needed to move, you know, and be yes. outside. So yeah, I totally agree with you. It doesn't have to be super formal and you don't have to be like, Oh, I missed my big workout. Like yeah. it's all over. Just do something different or yeah get on that dust off that ball you've got yeah right <laughs> great well thanks again Deborah. happy holidays hopefully yes, I'll have to you see too you yeah happy bye new everyone year. thanks for being here bye